For this lesson, we are going to learn how to simplify fractions, multiply fractions, divide fractions, and change improper fractions to mixed numbers. This is our outline, just in the same order as the title. We're going to simplify fractions, then we will multiply fractions, then divide fractions, then we'll learn how to change improper fractions to mixed numbers. So that is the order of the lesson for this video. So when you're simplifying fractions, there's lots of ways of doing it. The goal when you're simplifying fractions is to be able to find the biggest number they have in common for the numerator and the denominator. So there are two ways that I'm going to show you. One is finding the biggest number they have in common, which is the GCF. The other way is using prime numbers to help you simplify. And we're going to learn how to do both. Okay. So reducing using common factors. So if I have this example right here, 8 over 20. To simplify this, it says divide the numerator and denominator by the biggest number they have in common or keep dividing by common factors until they don't have any more common factors. Right? That's pretty much the goal, to divide by common factors until you don't have any more common factors between those two numbers, between the numerator and denominator. The fastest way to get to that is to divide by the biggest one they have in common. But sometimes it might not be easy to find the biggest number they have in common right away. So that means you have to keep finding more common ones. And I'll show you two examples of that for this problem. So I have 8 over 20, and I'm going to put 8 over 20 on this side. Okay. So for 8 over 20, the biggest number they have in common that I know is 4. Meaning that if I divide by 4 top and bottom, so if I divide by 4 here in the numerator and divide by 4 here in the denominator, I'm going to get 2 fifths and I went straight to my most simplified answer. At this point, they don't have any other factors in common. Two is the only factor of two, and two cannot go into five. Five is the only factor of five, and five cannot go into two. So this is using the GCF, the largest number they have in common. Now, what if you didn't know the biggest number that you had in common, but you knew that both of them were evens, and what's nice about even numbers is that you can always divide by two. Okay, so let me show you what happens when we do that. Divide by two, divide by two. Eight divided by two is four. Twenty divided by two is ten. This is reduced, but it's not simplified. Simplified is all the way at the end. All right, so this is where we run into this part. All right, keep dividing by common factors until they don't have any more common factors. Well, this was a common factor they had, but I wasn't sure if it was the biggest one they had. So once I divide those and I get this, I know there's another common factor in there. Ooh, it's two. They have a two in common. So when I do that, four divided by two is two, 10 divided by two is five. I get the same answer. Okay, so it doesn't matter which strategy you choose, you'll get the same answer if you're doing it correct. All right, one may just take you a little bit to get there, but that's okay. All right, as long as you are doing the correct work, doing it correct, then you should be fine. Okay, and if you realize right here, no matter the common factors that you multiply by, that you divide by, look, there's a two and a two. What is two times two? Four. It's the biggest one they have in common. So you will find that if you divide by six and then divide by two for a different example. And you get to the simplified answer by doing that. Well, two times six is 12. If you divided by 12 to begin with, you would have gotten straight to your answer. Okay, for here, divided by four, that's the biggest one they have in common. We went straight to our answer. All right, so this is the most common way of doing it, right? The biggest, um, uh, finding the biggest common factor. All right, so people usually get to this point. This is where we want you to get to. But if you're still practicing this, then um, using this way is totally okay. And we're gonna be looking at that today as well. Okay, so this way is using primes, prime numbers. All right, so when we do this, what we're gonna do is list out the primes for each number. 
Okay, for eight, hmm, let me just do my little prime tree just to make sure. Four times two, two is prime. Four is composite, so I'm gonna break it down again. Two times two is four. So remember, for these factor trees, which are also called prime trees, factor trees, prime trees, um, say it however you want. Um, they both mean the same thing. You're trying to break down the number into its prime numbers. So I see there are three two, so one, two, three. When I multiply those, I should get back eight. Always check your work. Two times two is four, times two is eight, perfect. Now for 20, I know that 10 times uh, two is 20. Five times two is 10. So I have two twos and a five. Let's just make sure. Two times two is four. Four times five, 20. There we go. Now, I listed out my primes for each. I haven't changed the value of it. I just changed the way that it looks. I just broke eight down into its prime factors and I broke 20 down into its prime factors. Now I need a zap. What zap means is that you are going to cancel numbers out. Two divided by two makes one, so I'm gonna zap it out. Two divided by two makes one, zap it out. We're left with two over five. It's the same problem over here, look. Two fifths, two fifths, two fifths. Whatever is left on top is the numerator. Whatever is left on bottom is the denominator, okay? In case you zap numbers out and there's nothing left on top, then you just leave it a one, all right? If there's nothing left on bottom, then you make that a one as well, okay? So we'll see some examples of that too. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to do these problems using um, both ways. Um, you pick whichever method you're most comfortable with, all right? We prefer for you to get to this point, okay? Try thinking of the biggest number they have in common and go from there. All right, so let me adjust this, okay. So it says simplifying, reducing, practice in both ways. So let's practice number one and two together, and then I'll have you practice three and four after, okay? I forgot the equal signs. I had to rewrite it on this side because it didn't look like we had enough room. So let's look at 12. Okay, well, I'm gonna split it down the middle, just like this, because uh, we're gonna practice it in both ways. I'm just going to do that. Okay. All right. So 12 divided by 40. Okay. The biggest number they have in common. Let's see. Well, I know that they're both evens. 12 is even and 40 is even. So if I can't think of the biggest one, if they're both even, I know I can divide by 2 for both of them. 12 divided by 2 is 6. 40 divided by 2 is 20. Mm, that's reduced, but it's not simplified. I can divide by two again, okay? Then I get three tenths, okay? That's what I get for that one. Now let's try our primes. Okay, I had 12 over 40, okay? For 12, I can break 12 down into four times three, and 40 into four times 10. Zap, zap and I'm left with three on top and two times five on bottom, which is 10, so three tenths. Perfect, we just did it both ways. And if you look right here, back at this one, look, this was a two and this was a two. If I divided by four originally, top and bottom, that would have been my GCF, the biggest number they had in common, and I would have got three tenths, okay? All right, let's look at number two. Okay, the biggest number they have in common is eight. So divided by eight, divided by eight, I get one third. Now what happens if you didn't see eight as the biggest one? What if you knew that four goes into both of them? Okay, divided by four, divided by four. Eight divided by four is two. 24 divided by four is six. Mm, that's reduced, but it's not completely simplified. So I, I could divide by two again. They're both evens. Remember, if they're both evens, if the numerator and denominator are both evens, you can always divide by two. Then I get one third. 
oh look it's the same answer up, as up here and look I divided by 2 and I divided by 4 2 times 4 is 8 look that was the biggest one they had in common anyways okay. alright so let me do it again using um, primes okay to make 8 I get 2 times 2 times 2 to make 24 I get I can use 6 times 4 so here's 4 times 6 zap 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 if nothing left is if nothing is left on the top or bottom you put 1 nothing is left on top so I'm going to put 1 and there's a 3 left on bottom so I get 1 third okay so go ahead and pause this and try number 3 and 4 and then come back and then I'm going to show you both ways of how to do this all right go ahead press pause now All right, so for four, I know that if I divide by four, top and bottom, that's the biggest one they have in common, and I get one fourth. All right, if you divided by two, you would have had, I'm just showing you a different way in case you went that route. If you divided by two, you would have had two eighths, divided by two again, you would have gotten one fourth, All right, the same. As long as you're doing the math correct, you'll get the same answer, even if it means you have to do multiple steps. And again, here, look, I divided by 2, divided by 2, 2 times 2 is 4, which was the biggest one they had in common. Okay. And for the primes, for this page, I want you to practice using both ways so that you can figure out which one you're most comfortable with. So if you did not do the primes, for number three and four, or if you did not do the GCF for three and four, pause it right now, finish those, and then come back. All right, pause it now. All right, I'm going to continue with this one in case you did both of them. This will be four times four. Cancel, cancel. Nothing's left on top, so it's a one. Two times two is four. I get the same answer. These are just different strategies. Now let's look at eight over 18. Okay. The biggest one they have in common, I'm going to say 2, they're both even, so let's see what happens. 8 divided by 2 is 4, 18 divided by 2 is 9. Oh, that's the only factor they have in common. Okay. Alright, so let's try 18 and 8 over 18 using primes. 2 times 2 times 2. 18 is 2 times 9, 3 times 3 is 9. Okay, so cancel. 2 times 2 is 4. 3 times 3 is 9, so there we go, 4 ninths. So again, this was practice with both ways for you to determine which way you like better. We prefer for you to be able to do the first way um, where you can try figuring out automatically the biggest one they have in common. All right, that's the best way of doing it. That will help you a lot in the future. All right, right now, this can help you as you're starting to get to the first way, All right? Alright, so at this point I want you to pick one of those strategies and press pause and try it out with both of these. Go ahead. Alright, welcome back. So I am going to um, go ahead and start dividing. I'm going to find the biggest one they have in common. Um, let's try two. Let's see what happens. All right, they're both even, so I'm going to do two. Uh, that makes four. That makes 15. And I'm not sure they have another factor in common, but if you had wanted, if you understand primes at this point, you can also break this down into primes if you wanted. And you can clearly see they have nothing in common. So this is your most simplified answer. Okay. Um, so right here I did something a little different. First I used G, um, I found a common factor and then I wasn't sure if there was another common factor in there so I just broke it down into primes and I can clearly see nothing cancels. So that means that's the simplified version. Okay, over here I'm going to divide by 2, divide by 2, I get 3 ninths. Hmm, but that's only reduced, it's not, oops, it's not simplified. 
So divide by 3, divide by 3, I get 1 third. And look, 2 times 3 is 6. If I originally divided by 6, I would have got 1 third. Okay. So let me show you what we could have done, it, what would have happened if you had done primes just in case you chose to do primes. 2 times 2 times 2, this would be three ta 2 times 15. All right, cancel, 4 fifteenths. For this one, 6 over 18, 2 times 3, and this would have been 2 times 9. Cancel, cancel, 1 third. So whichever strategy you prefer, use that one, okay? From now on, um, I am going to uh, pretty much just be doing, um, once we get onto the next portion of this, I am just going to be doing the, the most, the common factors, all right? But we have a, about four more, what, how many examples? Two more examples. I'll do both. Actually, I'll do both um, ways for the next two. And then after that, when we start multiplying and dividing fractions, I'm just going to be using common factors. So go ahead and press pause. You can use both ways or pick one way. I'm going to show you both ways when you come back. Go ahead and press pause and try these. All right, so 15 and 36. Hmm, I'm pretty sure they have a three in common, so I'm gonna divide by three, top and bottom, and I get five uh, twelfths, and that should be simplified. Let's try it out using prime numbers. Three times five, 36 is three times 12. Three times, this is 12, four times three is 12. All right, so that cancels, so I get 5, 4 times 3 is 12, 5 twelfths. All right, I get the same answer, okay? Over here, um, they're both even, so let me just divide by 2 and see what happens. Well, these still look like smaller numbers. Um, I get 32 divided by 2 is uh, 16, and that should be simplified. All right, well... Um, if I'm not sure if it's simplified, using prime numbers can always help. 2 times 7, 32 is, um, let's see, 8 times 4, so 2 times 2, and then 8, okay, cancel, all right, so that's a 7 on top, so we have 7 on top, 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8, times 2 is 16, there we go. All right, so again, we showed you two different ways of doing this, using common factors. Hopefully you find the biggest one they have in common first, and using prime numbers. <coughs> you pick which one you're more, more comfortable with. All right, we just finished simplifying fractions. Now we're gonna move on to multiplying fractions, and then we'll continue with the rest. And from now on, when we are simplifying, if we have to simplify, I will be using the, I'll be trying to use the greatest common factor, okay? All right, for multiplying fractions, it is super easy. If I have one half times three sixths, all I'm gonna do is multiply my numerators. These are my numerators, which is, oh, one times three is three. Then I'm gonna multiply my denominators, which is the bottom ones. Two times th six is 12. Then I'm gonna simplify. Okay, well I have three twelfths. Um, the biggest one they have in common is three. So then that makes one fourth. And ta-da! Again, down here it's, it's reminding you of the two different ways you could simplify. But remember, I'm gonna focus on um, using the common factors, all right? like I just did right here. If you're still using primes, go for it. Whatever you need to, right? It doesn't matter to me as long as you get the correct answer by doing correct math work to get to it. All right, so let's see if we can remember these steps. All right, step one was to multiply across. Four times five is what? 20. 
7 times 3 is 21. So I gotta multiply across. Okay. So I'm not sure if this is my answer. My third step is to simplify. All right, so I can find a common factor or I can break it down into its primes. So 20, hmm, oh my goodness, what? I'm gonna use primes here. I'm forgetting what makes 20. Well, if you forget, look. Look at what you multiplied, four times five. So four is two times two, and then five, 21, seven times three. Hmm, nothing cancels, so that means that this is my final answer. It's already simplified. There we go. I didn't need this. That was just me showing my work. If you did something like this and realize, oh, it's already simplified, just leave it there and box your answer so I can see your work. All right, go ahead and press pause and try this one and then come back when you're done. All right, hopefully you did three times four, which is 12, and then six times three, which is 18. Then we gotta simplify. Um, the biggest one they have in common here is a six. So I get two over three, and there's your answer. Now, if you wanted to, I'm not sure if you know how to do this, but this is totally okay. If you understand how to do this, feel free to do this. All right, I'm gonna show it to you here. Well, if I look at this, this is the same thing as saying three times four over six times three. Look, those cancel. You can totally do that. And at this point, you get four divided by six, and then you would have to divide by two of both, for both the numerator and the denominator. But you can also do two do this. If you recognize that 4 is 2 times 2 and 6 is 2 times 3, look, cancel that 2, cancel that 2, you're left with 2 thirds. So there's lots of different ways of reducing. I don't care how you reduce as long as you're showing your work and it makes sense, then then there you go. You have an answer. right? As long as you, as long as you show your work and it makes perfect math sense, that works. All right, but again, I'm going to be using um, common factors. All right, go ahead and try that one and see what you get. Press pause and then come back. All right, 1 times 3 is 3, 6 times 4 is 24. Okay, divided by 3 top and bottom, you get 1, hmm, 24 divided by 3. What does that make? Hmm, say if you're forgetting and you're not sure. You could do division like this. Three goes into two zero times. Zero times three is zero. Subtract. Uh oh, I get 24 back again. Okay, so three goes into 24 eight times. Okay, eight times three is 24. Zero, eight. There we go. What if I wanted to do the other way? One six times three fourths. Or oops, three fourths. Well, I could put it together. One times three and then six times four. Hmm, well, three goes into six two times. So I end up with one on top and eight on the bottom. Two times four is eight. And if you wanted me to write it out, here's three. Here's a three times two to make that. That cancels with that one. So this is just jumping ahead a little and noticing that that makes a two. So then what's left on bottom is two times four, which is eight. So you get the same answer. All right, we did simplifying fractions. We just did multiplying fractions. Now we're gonna get into dividing fractions and then move on to improper fractions to mixed numbers. All right, let's go on to dividing fractions. So there are three main things you need to remember. The first thing is keep, change, flip. Then multiply, then simplify. All right, so all you do is keep, change, flip, and then treat it as a multiplying fraction problem because that's what's gonna happen. For example, if I have 2 thirds divided by um, 1 third, I'm gonna keep the first fraction the same. Then I'm gonna change this division to multiplication. Then I'm going to flip 
this second fraction. It was one-third, now it's three over one. And then I'm gonna treat it like a multiplication problem, and then I'm gonna simplify. That easy. So to help you remember these steps, there is a, a dividing fraction song. Actually, there's several, but my most favorite one that I usually like to show in class is if you type in on YouTube, keep change flip vocabulary. You'll watch this, You'll a video will come up, and it's a really awesome video that kids really like about dividing fractions. So go ahead and look that up now if you would like. So right here is a good visual of what's really happening, all right, in print form from the computer. All right, so keep change flip. So if this is my original problem, I'm gonna keep that one the same. I'm going to change the division to multiplication, and I'm going to flip that second fraction. And this will be my new problem. From then, I can multiply across. Two times six is 12, four times five is 20 and then I could simplify and get and get my answer okay so keep change flip keep change flip say that five times fast keep change flip 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 okay so right now we are not going to do these four problems entirely this is just for us to practice the keep change flip so I'll do the first one with you and then I want you to do that with the rest again we're not solving these problems so I'm going to keep the first fraction the same change the division to multiplication and then flip this second fraction it was 4 as a numerator now 4 is the denominator the denominator was 8 now the numerator is 8 Okay, so go ahead and do keep change flip for number two, three, and four, and then come back. Do not solve them. All right, press pause um, after I'm done talking and do the keep change flip and then come back to the video so you can check your work. Go ahead and press pause now. All right, so keep this one, change that one, flip this one. Here's my new problem. Here, keep 12, change it to multiplication, and flip that second fraction. There's my new problem. Again, we're not solving it. Keep this one, keep the first one, change this to multiplication, and flip that second fraction, and this is what we get. There we go, that's our new problem. Again, we are not solving them right now for this page. We were just practicing the procedure. The first step, keep change flip. All right, so let's go ahead and practice this one together. All right, one-fourth divided by three halves, so three over two. So I'm gonna keep this one, one-fourth, change that to what? Multiplication, and this fraction was three over two. Now what is it gonna be? Two-thirds, all right, so we did our keep, change, flip, but we're not done. We need to actually solve the problem. Okay, so now it's a multiplication problem. When we're multiplying, we multiply across. One times two is two, four times three is 12. There we go. Our third step is to simplify if we need to. We do need to. I can divide by two, top and bottom. I get one sixth, and that's our final answer. So keep, change, flip, All right? Multiply, and then simplify. So go ahead and pause this, try this one, and then come back to check your work. All right, so keep the first one, change the division to multiplication, and flip that second fraction. Okay, now I need to multiply across. Two times four is eight. Three times six is 18. Okay, well, I could divide by two and the only reason why I'm dividing by two is because I can't think of a bigger number they have in common and I know they're both even numbers so I can always divide by two no matter what and that's actually our most simplified answer four ninths okay. pause this one and go ahead and try that one alright 
I keep the first fraction the same, change the division to multiplication, and I flip this second fraction. So hold on, before we go on, how do we know when we're going to be doing keep, change, flip? Whenever you are dividing numbers, right, dividing those fractions, okay? All right, 2 times 2 is 4, 5 times 4 is 20. The biggest number they have in common is 4, so I get 1 fifth. There we go. All right, last one to practice for dividing fractions. Go ahead, pause it, and then come back. All right, so I have 1 7th. I keep the first fraction, change the division to multiplication, and flip that second fraction. It's the same thing over and over again. Okay, so 1 times 7 is 7. 7 times 2 is 14. I can divide by 7, top and bottom, and I get 1 half. And say if you didn't realize that, look, if you didn't realize that you could divide by 7, look right here. From this part right here, I can simplify before I even get to that point, because look, cancel those 7's out, here's my 1 half. Okay. All right, so we started off this lesson being able to simplify fractions, then we multiplied fractions, then we put all of that together with learning how to divide fractions. All right, and those were pretty simple answers. The last thing we're going to learn about is how to change improper fractions to mixed numbers. That's the last thing we're going to learn. All right, well, let's see. Oh, that says improver, improver, improper, <laughs> sorry, improper and mixed numbers. So let's see what we're talking about, all right? If you don't know what an improper or mixed number is, let's see what happens when we um, divide these fractions. So I'm going to keep the first one, change this to multiplication, and flip that second one, okay? And when I do that, I get 2 times 8, which is 16, and 5 times 3, which is 15. Ooh, my numerator is bigger than my denominator. This is improper. Anytime the numerator is bigger than the denominator, it's called improper, all right? And I cannot leave it like that. They cannot be left like that. You have to change into something called a mixed number. And what that looks like is a number on the outside and then a fraction, like 1 and 1 15th. Okay, this is the mixed number for this improper fraction, right? You'll need to um, get to here from there, okay? This would be our final answer here, and that is what we're going to learn about with this section of this lesson, to find that mixed number if your answer is improper. Otherwise, you would just simplify like we had been doing in the previous part, and then you would be done. But if it's improper, if the numerator is bigger than the denominator, you will always have to change it to a mixed number. All right, so there are some pretty cool um, improper to mixed number um, videos, and there's a really cool one on YouTube. If you look it up, they're pretty funny. I think there's um, one that's... Um, I'll, I'll actually put it down in the description bar um, as a link. I'll try to do that so that you can watch it because it's a pretty funny video I like to show. All right, changing improper fractions to mixed numbers. There are two ways. There are probably other ways, but there are two main ways to change an improper fraction into a mixed number. The first one involves dividing. That's the first way. And the second way is involving a trick, and that has to do with more thinking about it in your head. Okay, so let's go ahead and figure that out. So say if I have 8 over 5, okay, that's definitely improper because 8 is bigger than 5. The numerator is bigger than the denominator. So what you're going to do is you're going to do, kind of, do long division up until you subtract. Right, so let me do a step by step. Five goes into eight one time. One times five is five. Then I'm gonna subtract. Eight minus five is three. Your answer is in here, okay? This one at the top 
which is your quotient, how many times it can evenly go into that number, would be one. That would be your larger number on the outside. The rest represents the fraction. This is your numerator and that is your denominator. So this is your whole number, then it goes your numerator, and then it goes your denominator. So think about it in a clockwise fashion. All right, so this will be one, and then three fifths. And that's our answer. All right, so you're gonna do long division up until you get to the subtraction. And then you'll be able to, you don't keep going and going and going, all right? Um, you're going to stop after you subtract, and then your answer is right there. It, this is your whole number, so that's my whole number here, one. And then this is your numerator for your fraction and your denominator for your fraction, all right? And if, say, if you were to keep dividing, it will be point something, something, something. This point something, something, something represents what three-fifths is, which is point sixty. So you'll actually stop at point six if you were to if you were to keep going. But I'm not sure if you realize that this fraction represents what these numbers would be if you were to continue if you were to continue doing long division. Okay. Um, something to just help you out when you are setting up your long division problem, if you're doing it this way, um, we like to think of this as the cowboy and the horse. Say this is the cowboy. Okay, and this is the horse. I'm a horrible drawer, right? Pretend that's a horse. The cowboy sleeps inside the house and the horse sleeps outside. Okay, so cowboy goes inside and the horse goes outside the house. Okay. You can also use your two fingers and guide them around to go like that. So again, you can use your two fingers and do that. Alright, so your middle finger would be the one that lands on the right and your index finger would be the one that lands on the left. So you do like a little curve, okay? Whatever helps you. All right, so right here is just um, a visual to help you remember how to do this. So if I have seven over two, cowboy is on top of the horse, the cowboy sleeps inside the house, the horse sleeps outside. All right, when you're dividing, all right, if you did not, this is just to go over some vocabulary too, all right? The inside number is called the dividend, and the divisor is the outside number. The quotient is the number that appears on the top. Whatever numbers are on top, that's your quotient, that's your answer, okay? Um, and we can find parts of our answer, because this will be three and one half. One, if I were to keep going, it would actually be 3.5 this will be my full answer, 3.5 as a decimal, but as a fraction it will be 3 and 1 half. Okay, so right here is just pointing out some vocabulary. You ask yourself, how many times does 2 go into 7? That's what this part is saying. And then you multiply the quotient by the divisor, all right, and then you put it there, and then you subtract. And then here's your answer, 3 and 1 half. Okay. So again, this was just another visual to help you out. All right, so I'm actually gonna have you practice this one. Go ahead and do some long division for this one and see what you get and then come back. Go ahead and press pause. All right, so this is the cowboy. Cowboy sleeps inside the house. Horse sleeps outside. 5 goes into 13, 5, 10, 15, only two times, because one more time will be over 13. All right, 2 times 5 is 10. Then I'm going to subtract. Oh, I'm almost done. After I subtract, I'm done with this part. All right, now my answer is in here somewhere. Go clockwise. Start at the top. 2 and 3 fifths. Perfect. There we go. 2 and 3 fifths. So if you get, if you're doing a multiplication problem or a dividing fraction problem and this ends up being your answer, you cannot leave it like this. This is improper. You would have to turn it into a mixed number. All right, go ahead and try that one and then come back. All right, so cowboys on top of the horse. All right, so Okay, so cowboy sleeps inside the house, and the horse sleeps outside the house. All right, nine goes into ten uh, one time, 
and make sure you're putting it on top of the zero because you're saying nine goes into ten one time. If you put the one on top of the one, you're saying nine goes into one one time. So you're messing up your place value if you do that. All right, one times nine is nine. Subtract, I get one. So my answer is one and one ninth. There we go. This is my whole number, my numerator, and my denominator. So go clockwise. All right, so we just had lots of practice using the long division, right? And here's this example again with eight over five. Now let's um, figure out how to use a trick. And what the trick is saying is, you know, what can you, you gotta think about these things in your head if you wanna use this way to try to figure out how to get to that mixed number. Okay, for example, it says, if I have eight fifths, okay? It says, what number do you need to multiply by five so by the denominator, that gets you close, but not over to eight. Hmm. Okay, so I start with five. Five times what number gets me close to eight? Okay, well, five times one is five. Five times two is 10, that's over eight. So one is my closest number. So I'm gonna do five, and I'm gonna put a one on the outside. I'm always gonna keep the same denominator. Okay, that's where you start with. Start with that denominator first. Like, let me do that part again. Okay, I'm gonna start with the same denominator. Okay, I'm gonna start with the same denominator and I'm gonna ask myself, five times what gets me close to eight? One. Okay, I can't go over eight. Now, it says from that number, how much do you need to add to get to eight? Hmm, five, six, seven, eight, three. Here's my answer, one and three fifths one and three fifths is the same answer. You can also think about, you say five times what gets me close to eight, which is one, and then do eight minus five, and that gets you the three. That works too. Okay, so we're gonna practice using the trick just so that you get some familiarity with it, and then you can choose which method you like best. So right now, we're just giving you lots of options with this lesson for you to pick which route you wanna go. Okay, so let's look at this one. Okay, I have six over five. Hmm, okay, so I'm gonna write the same denominator. Five times what gets me close to six? Well, five times one is five. Five times two is 10. 10 is over six, so it has to be one. Okay, and then I can just subtract these. Six minus five equals one. Or I can say, okay, five times one is five. Five plus what equals six? Five plus one, so that goes the one on, that's gonna be the one on top. And there we go, okay? And you can always check your work by saying, okay, let me, let me redo that math work. Five times one is five plus one is six. That will make six over five, yep. All right, go ahead and press pause and try that one. All right, let's see. Oh, I was gonna do the long division. Um, we're not gonna do the long division. So we're trying to, uh, we're gonna have, we're gonna have the same denominator on bottom. Okay, seven times what gets me close to 20? Seven times one is seven. Seven times two is 14. Seven times three is 21. Well, 21 is over 20, so the closest I can do is two times seven. All right, seven times two, which is two times seven, is 14. Okay, 14 plus what gets me 20? 14, six. Okay, so let's see, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, and here is our final answer right here. Okay, there we go. That works. So as you can see with this one, sometimes um, subtracting 20 minus seven won't, um, always work in this case, because look, that's gonna give me 14, and I wouldn't put 14 over seven, all right? That will make my two. All right, go ahead and try this one and see what you get, and then come back. All right, six as my denominator, has to be the same denominator. Six times what gets me close to 16? 
6 times 1 is 6, 6 times 2 is 12, 6 times 3 is 18, so it has to be 2. Okay, so 6 times 2 is 12, all right, and then let's see, 16, oh sorry, 12 plus what equals 16? Mm, 12 plus 4 equals 16. And you would think that this is our final answer, but it's actually not because it's not simplified. Sometimes this can happen. This is exactly why I gave you this example. All right, because look, 4 divided by 6, you can simplify that. You can divide by 2, top and bottom. So this part turns into 2 thirds. So your final answer, don't forget about this 2 on the outside. It has to go there. So it's going to be 2 and 2 thirds. And how you can figure that out beforehand, if you always want, let's say, if you want to make sure that your mixed number is always going to be simplified, make sure that this is simplified. You can simplify that first. Look. Okay, divide by, let's see, what are we going to divide by? 2. That will be, that'll be 8 over 3. Okay, and then if I look at, look, it's already setting up to be the same denominator. Okay, 3 times 2 is 6 plus 2 is 8. There we go. So you can simplify beforehand if you need to before you start turning it into a mixed number. All right, and that's the end of the lesson. All right, so for this lesson, we learned how to simplify fractions, then multiply fractions, then divide fractions, and then we learned how to change improper fractions to mixed numbers. All right, have a great day. Bye. Thank you to the interpreter who helped interpret this video. Thank you, thank you so much.